Hey, let's watch terrible movies. There was a man named Michael Medved, whom I like quite a bit. In his later life, he became a conservative political commentator. commentator. Please don't let that influence your opinion of him in his younger life. Also, if you are a noble Democrat, be assured that Michael Medved hates Trump too. So he's got that going for him. Anyway, way back in 1978, Michael Medved single-handedly invented the hobby of watching bad movies when he published his book, The 50 Worst Movies of All Time. I got my hands on this book and I thought it was just absolutely hilarious. I read it and tried to look at the movies and recognize some of the movies. And since then I've taken issue with some of the movies he had in it. I don't think they're as bad as he said, but lots of them were bad. Also, uh, Michael Medved is more of like a mainstream movie viewer than I am. He sees like like real movies, like love stories and musicals and, and dramas. And whereas I mostly just watch crappy horror movies. Anyway, in 1980, he followed up the 50 worst movies of all time with the Golden Turkey Awards. And this pretended to be giving out like a sort of a Academy Award. Like today they have the raspberries, which are handed out to terrible actors and stuff. But the Golden Turkey Award get all kinds of interesting uh, things like as the, the most ridiculous monster ever or the least erotic love story, you know, stuff like that. Now he struck gold here <coughs> because in the previous book, 50 Worst Movies, Medved had asked readers to vote for the worst movie of all time. Time, and <clears throat> he would give that movie the final prize in the Golden Turkey Awards. And here's the thing. Then, as now, people thought about recent movies as being the worst. So so most of the votes went for something new. Like, uh, I think the runner-up was actually Dino De Laurentiis' King Kong movie, which was, in fact, terrible. But despite the tendency of people to vote for the most recent bad movie, Plan 9 from Outer Space, 15 years old, won, even though it wasn't recent because it was so bad. And this actually led to a big resurgence of interest in Ed Wood, of all things, and made him sort of a counterculture star. Um, it eventually led to the 1994 movie Ed Wood, directed by Tim Burton, featuring Johnny Depp, Martin Landau, and even Bill Murray. We would get together and uh, my, me and my friends, we'd watch Ed Wood movies, and they were just amazed. I once showed a guy who liked like artsy movies and good quality movies, like Swedish movies and stuff. And I showed him uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space and he he was driven frantic by how terrible it was. Like at one point the cop in Plan 9 is like scratching his face with his gun and my friend was like, no, how could he do that? Why is it so terrible? He just couldn't comprehend how we could be bad. He saw the lady uh, thrown under the ground and she bounces off the cushions and he like it's just really amazing so anyway plan nine is great so i would get together we'd watch these movies and my friends would would enjoy them and we we soon found out that in fact edward's most amazing movie isn't plan nine but uh glenn or glenda um but plan nine and edward did more because we finally went to see the tim burton edward movie about edward about how crazy it was i i read a story about it which is pretty interesting which is that johnny depp plays edward in the movie and um Martin Landau plays Bella Lugosi. And of course, Martin Landau was like old enough to be Johnny Depp's dad, right? Um, and M Johnny Depp said in an interview that, that he was getting bored and there was too much ennui and making movies and he had enough money and he was thinking of Ed Wood being his last movie or his next last movie and he was going to quit making movies because angst, right? So what happened is that he's there and Martin Landau is playing Bella Lugosi and Martin Landau is like so enthusiastic and he clearly loved making movies and loved acting and really got into it and Johnny Depp saw that in Martin Landau and he told himself I want to be like that when I'm old and it reinvigorated Depp and as a result of Martin Landau's love for acting we eventually got a lot more stuff from Johnny Depp I mean we got terrible things like uh, uh, The Lone Ranger but we also got you know the, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff so that was pretty cool and, and Edward Scissorhands so yay Martin Landau now we went to see the Ed Wood movie by Tim Burton in the theater. So we're walking out of the theater and this was hilarious because the couple in front of us is walking out and there was a guy and his, his girlfriend and she was like, that was dumb. That was so stupid. Why did we see that? You know, this is crazy. And then, then her, her boyfriend turns to her and says, you do realize that everything in that movie actually happened, right? And she said, what? 
that was real. And then she just burst out laughing because it's just crazy. Anyway, by the way, interesting fun fact about the Ed Wood movie. In 1994, uh, it was still possible for Stefan Xapsi, who is the cinematographer, to shoot black and white stock and have it professionally processed. That's what Ed was. But the technical abilities to do that disappeared in the next few years. In 2001, the Coen brothers wanted to shoot the man who wasn't there in black and white. And they had to shoot it on color stock, then remove the color in post-production. Burton and uh, Stefan Chapsky had conspired with a desaturated monochromatic style in Batman Returns. A according to Burton's commentary, they realized that black and white was essential for Ed Wood when it came time to develop the makeup for Bela Lugosi, because nobody could find a reference for how Lugosi should look in color. Ed Wood is the, maybe the last movie ever to be shot on real black and white stock. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, if you're asking me if I recommend the film Ed Wood, yes, but with caveats. Before you go see Tim Burton's film, go watch some of his other movies first, because that will give you a background. And my friends who had seen those other movies, when they saw the guy who was supposed to be um, Tor Johnson, and they saw all the things, they were just, they were really digging it. Anyway, on to more bad movies. Because of Michael Medved and other things, I got interested in bad movies. One important reason was because I really liked monster horror movies, and usually mainstream media dismisses these as bad. Even today, when I'm looking at a review of a horror movie on IMDb, it usually is rated a star or two lower than, than its actual quality, at least in my eyes. Horror movies have it easier today than they did when I was growing up. They get reviewed in mainstream sites, and it's okay to like them. But back in the 60s and 70s, you were some kind of freak if you watched this trash. Since the movies were going to be considered bad no matter what, the filmmakers didn't try to make them turgid and meaningful. Instead, they said, hey, let's please the audience and make the movies exciting, which is fine by me. Let me give you an example. So 1979, I read a review in Time magazine, of all people, places, for the movie Alien, and it absolutely slammed it. It said it was it was terrible and it was a monster movie and of course and of course today people recognize Alien as a great film but that then it was just another monster movie. One thing they did do though is they they described the the monster as mollusk like which made me really interested in going to see it. When I saw it I didn't really think it looked like a mollusk it was looking more like a crustacean but uh, but I still liked it. Now in fact. This goes way back because Lovecraft saw the film Frankenstein, which now we know was a classic. And he said, Frankenstein was the only cinema I attended during the summer of 1931, and I was woefully disappointed. No attempt to follow the novel was made. Everything was cheap, artificial, and mechanical, though. I had expected it, though, for Dracula, which I saw in Miami, Florida last June, was just as bad. So even Lovecraft couldn't recognize film horror as real horror. This hurts my feelings a little bit because Lovecraft knew he was looked down on for being a horror author. He says so in his book, Supernatural Horror and Fiction. Oh well, I, I have other idols with feet of clay, uh, so I can bear up with Lovecraft not being perfect. Anyway, because I want to watch old monster movies, a lot of these are considered bad, and to be fair, some of them are actually bad. But you see, what I actually care about is that the movie's entertaining, not whether it meets some film critic's ideal. But also, for me, watching a film can also be a group event particularly when it's a bad movie because you want to share the fun. So I'm going to explain how to watch a bad movie. Let's take one for example, The Curse of Bigfoot. Now you can go onto the IMDb and see my review and I rated it a one, but that's only for quality. For entertainment, it's easily eight plus. So here's what to do with a movie like Curse of Bigfoot. First, watch it yourself with someone else. Like don't watch it alone, okay? Because once you realize how terrible it is, how terrible, awful, no good, very bad this thing is, to quote Judy B. Jones, you are now prepared to do it justice. You gotta see it again. Find a group of friends. Don't tell them about Curse of Bigfoot. Sit back with popcorn soda, a free evening ahead of you, and begin watching. Now, since you have already seen Curse of Bigfoot, you don't need to watch it closely again. Instead, you are being entertained by watching your friends who are fresh Curse of Bigfoot virgins. This is the show that you're gonna be entertained by, and you'll see your friends go through the stages of grief. First, shock as they are amazed by the endless inept prologues of Curse of Bigfoot. Second, denial that any movie could be so terrible. Surely the film won't show the dog drink the entire bowl of milk. Why would they? Why is the dog drinking milk? Why are they? Arrgh! Then there's gonna be anger. Now with luck, they'll direct their anger at the filmmakers, not you. This is terrible, what are they thinking? Fourth, bargaining. Your friends will start saying, hey, can we see Big Trouble in Little China instead? Or Troll 2 or anything else? Hey, I'll pay for the pizza. 
I'll buy you a six pack. Don't give in. Force them to suffer through Curse of Bigfoot all the way. Fifth, depression. This won't last too long. They'll sit there glumly staring at the film's idiocy in disbelief. Then the film will do something really stupid, like the scene where they have the long walk through the orchard that's supposed to be scary and is obviously telegraphed the monster's gonna get them, and they go through it to the town and buy some soda and make all the way, and they're never attacked. It's like the directors had never seen a movie before. This should spur them back into action. Finally, the sixth stage of Greece, acceptance. This is it. It's not getting better. Point out that it ends in a, in a fizzle, not a bang. Remind them that we were promised at the film start that several of the co college kids were permanently institutionalized. Ask your friends which of the kids they think were institutionalized. <laughs> to rub it in, you can then point out that there is neither a curse nor a Bigfoot in the movie. If anyone is still grouchy, go out to the backyard, then return and give Mr. Grumpy some genuine Native American prayer sticks. If you've seen the movie, you'll know. By now, by the end, your friends should be part of the cult. When they look at you with reproach, tell them now they can show Curse of Bigfoot to some new unsuspecting victims. And they should perk up a lot. Curse of Bigfoot, really everyone should see it because it kind of sets the bar, the, the low bar. Literally everything you see after Curse of Bigfoot will be better acted, better filmed, and better written but not more entertaining. Still better than Twilight, of course. And now you know how to watch a bad movie. Go forth and prosper. Also, subscribe and get my stuff. Thanks.